Okay. How cool was that intro B-roll sequence? You know, I think what makes it so cool was how stylized it was because we made it look like old school super eight millimeter or just eight millimeter film, which is what gives it that nostalgic kind of comforting old home video like dad shots vibe. That's what today's video is about is how to create that look with digital cameras, taking footage that's very high resolution and looks nothing like that and turning it into that. That's today. So excited. Okay, so what's funny about this style, this super eight old school nostalgic filmic look is that it's kind of coming back into style. You can see Instagram doing it with their stories when you can add and you can apply that VCR look to your, you know, the stuff that you're putting on Instagram stories. You have Instax cameras and Polaroid cameras and that vintage feel, that old super eight millimeter look is actually coming back. It's in style now. So the question is now, how do we get that look with the cameras that we have? And it starts in camera. You're gonna wanna open up your camera and change your picture profiles straight off. We wanna kill that sharpness and we wanna kill that contrast almost completely because that is one of the big things that's making the footage that we shoot these days not look like it used to back in the day. Not even close. I wanna shoot on the windowsill. Is that like, is that doable? I don't know who to look at, but. Let's do it, okay. Um, okay, now that we're up here on the windowsill, part of the way to get this look is you have to shoot for the look. It's kind of counterintuitive because you almost have to take everything that you know about filmmaking and everything that you've learned from me and this channel and everyone else on YouTube or school or whatever and kind of throw it out the window because the whole look depends on everything not being cinematic. Like you don't want to frame things beautifully and you don't want nice camera moves. You don't want depth of field, all of these things, gimbals and steady motion and you know the ninja walk, all this stuff we're gonna go over in depth, but you don't want to do any of these things, and that's what sells the vintage feel. Can we get down now? Let's go down and do this at the desk. I feel weird up here. <laughs> so one of the first things that you want to not do is the ninja walk. That's the technique to get very steady footage when you're just tiptoeing along, heel toe, to get that smooth shot. <laughs> no, definitely not. You want it to be more organic. You want it to be more loose. You want the camera shake in this instance. You don't want to go full Walking Dead on it. <laughs> but you wanna find some kind of happy ground where you're just walking casually, so you pick up the bounce of your step, let the camera kind of move back and forth. These are the things that we're going for. We're not going for smooth and slow gimbal. That's the last thing you wanna do. Absolutely no gimbals, but we're trying to just keep it casual. Just point the camera, zoom in, zoom out, all of those things. That brings us to actually zooming in and out. One of the things that you might remember seeing home videos of any kind is like the camera would just start to zoom. You get the WT and like they would just rock that button and it would just slowly zoom into the kid opening gifts or like the kid blowing out the candles. So you wanna actually move your lens slowly and maybe a little bit jittery because you know, not professional is the key here. So maybe it goes a little too fast or a little bit at a time. So the opening shot of that sequence, you can see I was purposefully just trying to zoom it poorly to give that effect. I think one of the important things to do is look for more content to film that feels vintagey. So not necessarily trying to nail that super eight look from the vintage days with a Lamborghini or you know someone on a one wheel where it would work, it would be fine. But I think finding things that feel a little nostalgic or feel old, you know, or focusing more on relationships and the human emotion, those types of things are gonna sell this effect better than a supercar in Dubai. I mean, it might work, but it just, it won't work as well. Huge tip right here, okay? Huge tip, zero depth of field. You do not wanna shoot this wide open at 1.4 or 2.8, and I filmed and it hurt my soul. Like it, I started at 2.8 and realized there was too much soft depth in the foreground. So I changed it to 5.6 to F8. I ended up shooting everything at F9. So I just wanted maximum focus everywhere because that's one of the things, these cameras weren't shooting with beautiful bokeh and depth of field. So you wanna shoot stopped down, heavy, so everything is in focus. That's a big, big tip. Also keep in mind your framing, you want it to look square. You want it to look four by three. If you do have something happening on the very right of the frame, keep in mind that you're gonna wanna bring that whole left side in to make it four by three. Or if you have something in the center, wherever you're framing your things, just keep that frame in mind when you're shooting the content to then make vintage. 
One more example of like framing, for instance, here's a shot of the Canadian flag. This is what I just started to do inherently. I wanted to film it with some negative space in the center. And I started thinking like, no, that's what Peter McKinnon would do. Like, what, what would I not do? So I moved over to get like the stadium lights in frame, kind of in the way of that flag as well. And then realized that camera move itself of me walking over to try to, you know, obstruct the view, that little spot, that little in and out, that's the footage. That's the look that I'm going for. I want like the kind of garbage transition over to where there's more nonsense in the frame. That's that's the sweet spot. Okay, now we're gonna talk about post-production. This is where a lot of the magic kind of comes out in the edit, where we're actually gonna stylize it. We're gonna add all of the film grain. We're gonna add all of the sound effects, which are gonna audibly sell how old this footage is. And then we're gonna pair that with some music that's fitting for the era that brings out the feels. And this is where it really all kind of comes together. So let's jump into the computer and show you how we were able to take the footage from the camera and then turn it into what it looks like now. Here's how to do that. Okay, first thing you're gonna do is drag in the footage that you have. So we're gonna start with this shot that I got actually filming out the window at the office here. First thing we're gonna do is drag it onto the timeline. Then we're gonna create an adjustment layer to drop above it. You're gonna right click, hit new item, then go over to adjustment layer that drops it into your project panel here and then just drag it onto your timeline and extend it out to match the length of your clip. Now head back over to your effects panel. You're going to go to your favorites, which I've already got some of these listed here, but if you don't, you can type crop into the search bar up top and it'll show up. Grab that crop effect and drag it onto the adjustment layer. Your left and your right, you're gonna crop them both by about 13%, just to give you that four by three aspect ratio. All right, and now it kind of looks something like this if we just let it play which looks already a little more uh, super eight millimeter. Okay, now we need to find some film grain and effects and sound effects. Now, luckily, I actually just before I went and made all of this myself, I did a quick Google for super eight millimeter free film effects and found this blog called Beach Production or Beach B-Roll. There's a YouTube video for it below that I linked and it was free and I was able to just download it and apply that as an overlay over top of all this footage. If you didn't want to go ahead and create it yourself, I'm going to overlay that on the footage here and I'm going to create some extra effects myself. So it's just like one big punch bowl of vintageness, okay? Drag that clip once you've downloaded it or whatever overlays that you have, if you bought them from a different stock site like Adobe Stock or Storyblocks or any of those places, this isn't sponsored, but all of those places have stuff like this too. All right, once that footage is on your timeline, you can go over to your effect controls and actually change the blending mode to either overlay or soft light, whatever looks better for the footage that you shot. Looking good, now let's play that back. Uh, it already looks kind of, this is great. Okay, let's keep going with uh, some color grading. So let's add a Lumetri color tab to this effect. And that's where we're just gonna mess around with uh, the creative tab. If you drop that down, you can see faded film. You can see things like sharpen. We're gonna actually lower the sharpen even more. And then we're gonna mess around with the vibrance just to make this, you know, as vintage as possible. Obviously this part is completely, it's gonna be your style, what you think looks good. It kind of, there's no wrong way to do it here. I'm just adding a little bit of colors in the shadows. I'm adding a little bit to the highlights. I want to add a little bit of blue to the shadows because it was a snowy day outside. So that's what we've done with these color wheels here. Now I'm gonna add an effect called noise, which is gonna give me even more grains. We're just gonna drag that onto the clip and then maybe boost that up to like, hmm, I don't know, something like, uh, 15 or 13%. You don't wanna go too hard or it looks like you actually have a beach on top of your footage, but 13% would do the job. And then let's add posterize time. Now what that's gonna do is allow us to actually cut some frames out of this because we shot it at 24P, but we can actually make this 18 frames a second, which is gonna skip more frames and make it look even more just garbage and vintage. That's what we want, right? That's the whole point for this. So check out when we change that little dialog box over here on the left side, frame rate, we make it 18 18. Now when we play the footage back with the overlays, with the grain, with the posterized time, it's just got that feel. It's got that feel. And that's pretty much it. Any kind of stylization that you want to do above and beyond, feel free, depending on the look that you're going for. But those would be the basics of making your digital footage look like super eight millimeter vintage film. Now, the last thing I would say is if your overlays didn't come with sounds, finding those sounds on another stock audio website or something like Epidemic Sound, if you're subscribed to them, you can find all those vintage little clicks and film reels and all that stuff to lay on top of the footage, which really adds that ambience especially when someone else is watching it.
boom. And there you have it, implementing all of those steps, both in what you do before you shoot, what you do during the shoot, what you do in post-production, the music, the sound, all of those things encompassed together gives you a really cool, super eight millimeter looking vintage vibe. Now you might be asking like, why do I wanna even do this? I'm not sure where I would even use this type of effect in my videos. And I think it's good when you're trying to recall the past. So if you remember the bucket shot at the very beginning, we used a bunch of these types of features, not so dated because I shot it on high eight and it wasn't that far back, but we did use like the record and stop and fast forward and we did put film grain. So I think it's good when you're trying to show the past or it's a flashback, something like that. Implementing this technique is gonna be really, really great and helpful and stylized. Now, it's also a cool technique if you wanted to shoot a wedding or make like a really special video for somebody that just, there's something about it that recalls nostalgia and it recalls the emotion and it makes you feel something a little more than today's cinematic, impactful drone shot 8K videos do. And those are good and they have their place, but there's just something cool about being able to recreate the past uh, with what we have now. So you can kind of throw it in wherever you want. I just figured you would enjoy learning how to do that technique. Cause again, like I've said before, having that extra tool in your toolkit is just gonna make you more valuable as a filmmaker. And at the end of the day, it's fun. It was so much fun to just go shoot this and just be silly and get the camera up in my face and hang off a basketball net and do a bunch of things I would never do for B-roll. And watching it back, I just thought that was that was great. So I hope you guys have fun with it. That is how to make your digital footage look like Super 8 film, faking the vintage vibe. That's it for today. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Hit that like button if you like this video, smash it. If that's something that you're into, hit the bell to actually get notified when I upload videos because YouTube doesn't do the best job of doing that. So subscribe, hit the bell, like all of those things. And thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next video. See you later. Intro. Then I'm gonna ride in on my one wheel. Oh, fully dented the fridge. Look at that. Boom, right there. You see that? That did that didn't go that that didn't go at all how I planned. <laughs> ah. Hi. Look at this guys. I actually busted the door. Like I full on unhinged this by hitting it with, oh man. Ah, guess I'm gonna have to fix that.